ironic and counterintuitive that the substance that is the most common on Earth, that is the most powerful on Earth, that rules over all of the weather patterns, all of the climate, that the very substance that we're made of, even peace on Earth. There's, you know, studies showing that the more drought stricken, the more war torn, and that the more hydrated a landscape is, the more peace there is. Like, it's so integral to everything. Why is it the most overlooked thing? We say hydration, most people mm -hmm. will think, right? I'll just grab a bottle, a plastic bottle of Dasani and just down it. Mm -hmm. Three a day, plastic, just water bottles, and that everyone thinks I'm hydrated then. Mm -hmm. Why is that wrong? Why is it not as simple as just drink, chugging down a plastic bottle of water? What does it actually require to become hydrated? Yeah, so the main factors of hydration, because it does have so much more to do with your bio water than with your drinking water, most of those. What do, what do you mean by that? What does that mean? So your bio water, meaning the state of your internal waters, like okay. the state of your intracellular fluid and these different hydrological cycles in your body. If you're able to put to good use the water that you're made of, then you don't even necessarily need to drink that much water because your body can produce its own water if you've optimized your internal hydration processes. Like you produce metabolic water inside your cells. That's deuterium depleted water. It's the most hydrating thing we can drink and we don't even drink it. So I would say the most important things that we can do for hydration are actually um, more to do with our, our practices, our activities, our lifestyles than it is to do with the water that we drink. But since you asked specifically about drinking a bottle of, you know, Dasani or something like that, um, I'll address that as well. Because, you know, I think of there as being three different kinds of drinking water, generally speaking. There's the water that unfortunately most people drink, which believe it or not, is actively dehydrating them. I know it sounds kind of counterintuitive. Or tap water, shit like that. Tap water, reverse osmosis water, distilled water. Um, the latter two are actually aggressive solvents. So they can actually leach minerals from your body over time and lead to things like diuresis and heart disease because they're empty waters. They're they're highly processed, highly industrialized waters. That's crazy in and of itself. That just yeah. people who believe they're drinking water and getting hydrated are getting dehydrated. Exactly. So just a while, just a note that that's a pretty crazy concept. It is. And it's it's largely because most people don't understand what water is, that water is in itself a living being and has its own needs and its own life cycle and its own processes in nature. And when it is divorced from that life cycle and then industrialized and heavily treated and heavily processed, it loses the life-giving characteristics that it comes with when it arises from a spring. And so just like we don't want to eat processed food, we don't want to drink processed water either. Mm -hmm. So that's the first category of water. It's actively dehydrating people. Tap water, of course, falls into this category as well. It's got, you know, chlorine that is like a mini genocide for your gut microbiome. And actually your, the health of your microbiome is a huge part of, of hydration. Um, and then fluoride, which, you know, cuts out cell to cell signaling. No and, third eye. No, yeah. And exactly. It calcifies the pineal gland and calcifies all of the, the soft tissues and cartilage in your body, all of that kind of thing. Um, so unfortunately, that's the water that most people drink. And then the second kind of water out of the three is... Uh, kind of the minimum of what our biology expects of us. It's what our ancestors have been preferentially choosing for countless millennia, and that would be raw, wild spring water. Um, water that has been harvested directly from Mother Earth that has the full spectrum of electrolytes, the mineral profiles. It's really well structured from the geomagnetism of the rock formations in the earth, really well structured from the vortexing processes that it goes through as it arises to a spring head. Um, and it's just the ideal water. It's so much more bioavailable for us in many different ways. And then there's actually a third type of water. So the first type of water dehydrates us. The second type of water, you know, sustains life. It can hydrate you. And then the third type of water is is living water, like vivacious water, water that heals you, water that brings you to life in a completely different way. And this would be like water that is found at very rare springs throughout the world. They're called miracle springs, miracle healing springs. Like you may have heard of um, the miracle healing spring in Lourdes, France at Bernadette's Grotto. There's, yeah, there's one in Tlacote, Mexico. There's one in Nadana, India. Um, Hito, Tenryo, Soy, Japan. There's like just a, a few scattered around the world that are so miraculously healing that pilgrims will travel 
from all around the world to go drink of these waters and literally be healed of their ailments. Magic Johnson was healed of his AIDS by drinking the water from from the Tlacote, Mexico spring. And, you know, that's just one famous example, but there are, there are thousands. And so when you look at what makes that water different from the first two, it's generally... Um, incredibly well-structured, incredibly crystalline, and really, really high in um, different factors like certain kinds of silica and molecular and atomic hydrogen and things like that. So I think what's important to, to kind of take away from, from all of that when it comes to our drinking water is at the minimum, we need to either be harvesting from a spring or recreating the process that happens to water at a spring, doing some biomimicry to bring our water, whatever water we have access to, whether that's tap water or reverse osmosis water, whatever it is, bringing that back to its spring quality state, because that's the minimum that our biology expects of us to be able to stay hydrated in these aquatic bodies. How's that, that done? Let's say, you know, I have, all I have is just filtered water. Um, or maybe I can get a hand on a bottle of spring water. Mm -hmm. What are the steps you take or someone has to take to mimic the structure you're talking about? Yeah, so the, the steps that I teach are forage if you can, but if you can't forage, then filter, structure, balance, and energize. So filtration is important because... What kind it, of filtration? It really depends. Not a Brita? Brita's no, no good? No, we actually, we call that the Febreze of water filters. Makes, makes sense. <laughs> It says, even if you read on the package, it says that it removes the smell of chlorine, but it doesn't remove the actual chlorine. Um, so it's a scam. It's not doing anything. No, not a thing. And it's actually owned by the Clorox company, which is the same company that produces the chlorine that it's supposed to be. Yeah, I saw that on like a mainstream journal, jur mainstream media outlet being like, it does nothing. Yeah. So even the Matrix is calling them out, which is like, it's, it means it pretty bad, but continue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It at least gives you the, it gives you the feeling like you're doing something. Yeah. And, and it's good that that's at least in the mainstream awareness that people recognize they do need some kind of filter and that's a good place to start. Um, if you do go with something like reverse osmosis or distillation, you really have to have to do the steps afterwards. Otherwise, that water, like I said, is going to be an aggressive solvent that's going to take more energy from your body than your body actually receives from that water in hydroelectricity. So um, another option that I really like is certain kinds of carbon block filters. Um, actually, on my website, I have a really well-vetted section of just all of the um, filters that I recommend. And actually, the, the website is broken up into all of these steps so that you can find, you know, what you need for each of these steps. And then the second step is structure. And that's really making sure that those hydrogen bonds are really well connected and really crystalline and really symmetrical in the ways that are so important for the water to be coherent. And um, you can do that in a number of different ways through uh, ambient energy like um, infrared or through, and in fact, that's one of the reasons why infrared saunas are so enormously healing. They structure our bio water. Um, you can do it through vortexing or flow forms, which is how you see it happen in nature most often. You know, in, in nature, water is never stagnant. She's always moving and spiraling and opening up innumerable inner vortices that create these nano bubbles of aeration. And movement is just so inherent to who water is as a being. And so it's really important to get her, get her flowing, get her vortexing. <clears throat> and then another way to structure the water would be through... Um, vibratory fields. So like the Schumann resonance, for example, if you expose water to the Schumann resonance or to, um, you know, uh, like an infopathy tool or something like that. Again, we just want to mimic what happens in nature. So water is filtered in nature when she moves through the different layers of the geological cycle. You know, she moves through layers of carbon deposits and layers of clay and uh, layers of soil and, and draw off a lot of the, the particulates of the water. And then um, you know, again, she gets vortex through those movement processes and she gets structured through the geomagnetism of the earth. So we want to mimic that to bring the structure to the water. Um, and then balance, the balance step is making sure that there's a good balance of the mineral profile and the electrolytes in the water. In fact, there's a doctor named um, Dr. Freydun Batmangelic, who spent his entire career basically proving how every single disease is a state of dehydration and the dehydration is at the root of of all illness and his main protocol which he called the water cure and it did cure innumerable people was mostly based on 
just restoring the electrolyte balance back to water. So that step is enormously important because again, we have to have those mineral ratios of our bio water and there's massive, there's just an epidemic of mineral deficiencies. Um, you, are you adding minerals or is, do, you, do minerals get created from the structuring? Like do you put stuff in it or does the practice you're talking about create the minerals? Yeah. So, so water is naturally born at a spring, having the perfect balance of uh, mineral ratios for that ecosystem. So if you go harvest spring water somewhere around here, that water is going to have a really good mineral ratio already, relatively speaking. I mean, it, it really varies. We call this the TDS or the total dissolved solids of the water. So you could have a really soft water with a low TDS, low mineral reading, or a very hard water with a really high TDS. And generally you want something relatively in the middle. Um, but if you're recreating these natural processes with a filtered water, then you do want to manually add those electrolytes back to the water. Like Even, what? Like what, what salt? What do you mean by how do you add them? Yeah, it could be just a, a sea salt or a um, Himalayan salt or a volcanic salt. Or, you know, my favorites to add are called Quinton marine plasma. They're so much more than just electrolytes. They're actually marine plasma. They contain a, a broad, they contain every single mineral um, and trace mineral in the spectrum, as well as RNA, DNA, vitamins, enzymes, fatty acids, organic acids. It's really the best. Um, and then there are also just specifically electrolyte drops that you can get. Again, on my shop, I have like all my favorite electrolytes in a category on there. But to just keep it really simple, you could just add about a quarter teaspoon of salt, high quality salt. Um, to every quart of water that you drink. Yeah, so we've kind of been talking about like the scientific literal structure of water, mineral count, how to hydrate yourself. I'm more interested, even though that's cool, I'm more interested in the in the esoteric spiritual mm -hmm. side of things where it's like, what's the number again of what percentage water we are? Is it what, 70, what is it? It's 70% by volume, but molecularly, it's actually 99.95% water molecules. Yeah. So, so out of every thousand molecules in your body, 999 and a half of them are water. Yes, yeah, why, why I'm saying that is that I'm a big believer in like, you know, whatever you think and believe your creative energy and your and your whole state of being, right? If I keep thinking negative, I'm going to have a negative charge, positive, positive charge. If I'm having, believing in myself, I'm going to draw things that reflect that. If I don't believe myself, I'm insecure, I'm going to draw people who reflect that back to me, right? So why I'm saying that is that if this charged up system is water, how, does it make sense to like speak intention to the water we drink, right? Like if it's just like, if I just grab a bottle angrily, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I just like chug it down. Is there, well, I'm asking, is there an effect of being like, it sounds super boo-boo and out there and I'm, I'm cool to see to, to be seen that way, but it's like, what does that practice look like and is it effective of literally being like maybe like writing love on your water or speaking to it? Like, what does that actually look like and do you recommend that way of interacting with water? Because if you, by theory, right, if you like charge our water with intentions and love, like when we drink it, mm -hmm. it has to affect our frequency. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In fact, it's the water that conducts that frequency through the body. It's the master conductor is the water and the electrolytes that are in our, our bio waters. And water is enormously responsive. As I said before, she is a, a sentient being and she's often been considered the um, the sensory organ of nature. So water is always seeing and feeling and perceiving and hearing everything in its environment within about a 60 octave range, so far beyond our perceptive abilities. And she stores all of that in her molecular matrix. In fact, inside of every um, cluster of water molecules, which can range from around three to 60 molecules per cluster, there are at minimum 440,000 panels per cluster. And each one of those panels is responsible for sensing and storing and transmitting and transducing and amplifying vibration and frequency. And so this is why water has been used in every major religion for creating holy water because it carries intention, it carries prayer, it carries vibration better than anything else. And, um, you know, there have been a number of researchers who have shown the effect that water's environment has on the water. Do you remember some of those experiments? I remember reading in a book some crazy shit, like someone like if you spoke, sorry, giving it to a plant, it affected the plant somehow. Do you remember some of these studies exactly? Oh, for sure. Yeah. What are some of the craziest ones? So the most common one that everyone is really familiar with is Dr. Masaru Emoto's work. Mm -hmm. And he did um, crystallography using a dark field microscope. Um, 
And, you know, his work doesn't necessarily hold up entirely well to scientific rigor because um, he kind of cherry picked his data a little bit. So he's not my favorite example to use, but I'm so grateful for his work. And I still believe it has so much validity and so much beauty because it really raised awareness about water's sentience in the mainstream. And it, it definitely shows water's responsiveness, that water is responding very clearly to words, to music, to thoughts. In fact, there were Russian researchers, I forget if it was Dr. Volokov or Dr. Kolznikov, I want to say it was Dr. Kol, Kolznikov, um, who showed that of all of the things that water is sensitive to, light, sound, electromagnetic signals, even even the the subtle frequencies in the cosmos, you know, if, if Venus is trying Jupiter right now, water knows about it. Water is actually picking up on all of the astronomical movements. Theodore Schwenk showed that in his work. Mostly. The fact um, that the tide changes based on the moon, that's like in and of itself pretty crazy as well, yeah. For sure, yeah. And water is responding to, you know, water is actually even able to predict sunspot activity, sun flares, up to a week beforehand. It's so sensitive to the cosmic um rhythms and and that's a big part of its dharma its purpose is to actually weave us as bodies of water into the the larger astronomical narrative and and dance and symphony that's going on around us but this russian researcher dr kolznikov or volkov um anyway he showed that what water responds to more than anything else is human emotion so yes you can play water or you, your favorite piece of music and it's going to become the liquid vessel of that piece of music and you're going to be translating that music into your cells when you drink it but what it responds to more than anything else is human emotion now there are other researchers one of my favorites um, and actually a, a dear friend and colleague veda austin she's actually developed a water crystallography method that everyone can access at home you don't have to have a microscope for it. It's it's macro scale, just using a Petri dish in your freezer. And she's shown some incredible results of water being enormously um, responsive to anything that she shows it. But she's also shown that, you know, just like the ancients said, in fact, I think it was said in the, in the Vedas, that, you know, water is truth. And she's shown that you cannot lie to water. So if, for example, you say love to your water, but what you're really feeling is anxious, that's what the water's going to pick up on. Um, and so, you know, there's innumerable other researchers as well. There's um, Andreas Schultz. I really love his, his methods of showing water's responsiveness to its environment because I think his are really the most practical in terms of the application of it being functional water for use in, um, in medicine and for use in agriculture and things like that. Um, also, Professor Bernd Kroplin showed that... Um, different water drops depending on their environmental influences and what they've been exposed to and the kind of vibratory frequencies they carry actually have different social interactions with one another just like we do as human drops of water um yeah there are there are a lot of other researchers as well it's uh, theodore schwank he had I'll, a drop what, what do you method. mean that water's connecting to each other what do you mean um, that the different well, he showed that the different water droplets will communicate with each other differently and will have different social interactions with one another depending on what they've been exposed yeah, to. I think maybe on in social media sometimes I'll see those videos, those clips of like something someone thinks is an individual habit and then everyone's doing it at the same time. Yeah. For that, what makes you think of me as a kid, you know, in a car looking at the windowsill and thinking that like all these drops are communicating and they're mm -hmm. friends. And I, I thought it was an irrational childhood, you know, thought, but hearing that, it's like, oh shit, the kind of word is vibing out in the, on the window. Yeah, you were picking up on it. You knew it. The water was telling you exactly what was going on. So those droplets are actually just like, like communicating in some way. They're like, they're in some way, they have yeah. their own life. Yeah, absolutely. According to Bern Kroplin's work. And, and honestly, the more you work with water, the more you start to see that it really does have personality. You know, one of my um, dear friends and colleagues, Jonathan Butts, he's one of the top water scientists. He has an incredible laboratory up in Ohio. And um, he started off as a nuclear engineer. Um, and then, you know, he was working with water in these nuclear reactors to, to cool the reactors down. And he started seeing that water behaved as though it was a conscious living being, as though it had a personality, as though it had a sense of humor, as though it had. And so he actually switched his entire career from nuclear engineering to 
being a water researcher for this exact reason. And what he's found since then is, you know, not only is it socially interacting in different ways, but um, that it's actually even solving complex mathematical equations. So it really is the primary intelligence of nature, the primary intelligence of the universe. You know, it's tapping into the field of infinite intelligence, the Akashic field, through the hydrogen atoms. So there are kind of two different um, ways of, of conceptualizing of water's relationship to the quantum field. One is that water is the physical manifestation Water as the physical manifestation is the feminine, and that the ether, the waters of the ether, this oceanic um, field of energy that is completely uniform across all time and space, is the masculine counterpart. But they're actually one and the same being, and they're intimately interconnected. And water's health is what determines how well it's able to tap into that field of consciousness. Right? It's been said that water is the glove on the hand of consciousness, and that is because the, the etheric field and the water are actually physical and non-physical counterparts of the same thing. The way I like to conceptualize of it is that water, like us, has a body, mind, and spirit. And what we think of as water is solid, liquid, gas, and plasma, and that is just such a, a, a sadly narrow perspective of what and who water is because just like if I'm talking to you and I say hey Lucas what's up I'm not talking just to your physicality just to your body it's to to your body and your mind and your soul and your spirit and your personality and everything that makes you you your whole being and it's the same with water she's a multi-dimensional spirit and so I think of her mind as being the etheric field and her spirit as being hydrogen and the more we actually look into the physics of hydrogen Nassim Haramin showed that the proton at the center of hydrogen is actually a black hole. And so when the electron dances away from that atom every, you know, zepto second, this is happening continuously because the, the electrons are in a, just a probability field. So these hydrogens, if they're protium hydrogen, are actually opening black holes into the heart of consciousness itself. I mean, no one knows where they go, but they certainly open um, pathways of, of communication. It's theorized that there are wormholes in between every single uh, black hole that yeah, it makes sense them all. In our own cellular, maybe I'm not thinking irrationally, but when I'm dehydrated, I lose all connection to, to wisdom. I'm just mm -hmm. like stuck in this shadowistic hole of, of like confusion, hate, uh, self-hatred, anger when i'm hydrated it's, it's like a channel i'm like things come in like like that yeah. that how does that relate to that does it like the fact absolutely. that we're hydrated we open up we're much more connected to truth or, or wisdom or divinity yeah absolutely in fact i think it was dr zach bush who said something to the effect of um water is what plugs you into the free energy of the universe. It's what plugs you into source consciousness. And he said, you cannot have a spiritual experience if you're dehydrated. You cannot have a spiritual um, awareness of your own true being if you're dehydrated. And Makes that's sense. because, yeah, it's because that's that's literally what what taps us into the field of interconnectivity with with everything, with all of life. And as I said before, it's it's your prana, it's your mana, it's your chi, it's that life force energy. And most people walk around not even realizing how disconnected they are. I mean, how hard is it to get into a deep state of prayer and meditation when you when you're sick, you know, when you're diseased, when you're in pain? And, you know, sickness, disease, and, and chronic pain are all direct downstream effects of these various manifestations of dehydration. So how are you communicating with your water? First, I want to hear your, your relationship verbally with water, and what should people, what's like a good practice to have? Let's say, you know, you, you fill up your bottle, mm -hmm. it's on the table, about to drink it. Like, what, what are things we should be saying to it? And what do you, what's your practice? Mm. I think, um, I mean, it's different for everybody, of course. You're going to have to develop what what speaks to you and what resonates most with you. Of course, first, I think it's important to really take care of water's physical needs um, because most of the water we encounter is highly traumatized. It's dormant. It's comatose. It's not able to connect with the etheric field and tap us into that level of energy because it's it's disconnected. It's bulk water. It, it doesn't have that, that conductivity to it. So very first thing is filter, structure, balance, and energize the water. Once those are taken care of, and, and this actually goes into the energized step, 
is, you know, how we, we treat the water energetically, what kind of energetic environment it has. And, and that's really the, the, what is it? The fifth step in that process is energize because, um, you know, water is going to be so responsive that it, it, it varies at least for me day to day on, on what it is that I need. So for example, um, sometimes I will sing water songs to my water. Like I have traveled the world. One of my favorite things to do what is you collect- you Sing Katy Perry, what are you singing? <laughs> water medicine songs. <laughs> yeah. Water medicine songs from around the world. But you know, you don't have to be a singer. You don't have to know any songs. You can hum to the water. Water just responds to the vibration. Hold it to your heart and just hum and let it hear it, you know, respond to the cymatic resonance of your voice. Um, another thing that you can do is use something like a, an infopathy pad. So this is something where you can actually create homeopathic remedies out of your water using the vibration of just about anything, any vitamin, any mineral, any medicine. I like to, any nootropic, you can even do, um, entheogens like you can you know vibrate your water with the the vibratory field of of ayahuasca or psilocybin or something like that it's like microdosing without microdosing i like to expose mine to oxytocin every day to just get into that open heart field space so what does um, that consist of like you're trying to get into an open heart space and then like you send it to the water or you're saying to the water like i love you you're writing i love love like what is that how do you charge the actual water with the vibration of of love and gratitude and abundance. Mm-hmm. Well, the easiest way is to just generate that feeling mm-hmm. yourself and and give it to the water and share it with the water as though you're you're sharing it with a, you know a dear friend that you you truly care about and you're trying to fill them up with joy. Um, but when I was talking about infopathy specifically, that's actually a device that you can get and you program it with. Um, Basically, I mean, they have thousands of different um, infoceutical remedy vibrations, so you can literally charge it with the specific frequency that you're looking for. Another way of energizing water is using something like the Analemma wand, which contains the full spectrum of light frequencies. And um, aquaphotomics is a really amazing emerging field of how water responds to light. And actually, no light takes its effect on biology on any life form on this planet except through its interactions with water so the reason why you know light frequencies affect our circadian rhythms etc is because of the way that it's affecting our bio water and so if you are able to energize or bless your water with something like a an analemma wand that contains the full spectrum of light frequencies it does a lot of good for your own circadian rhythms and that sort of thing Um, another practice that a lot of people like to take on is setting their water out in the moonlight to receive that lunar energy and the starlight energy. Um, I know Paul Check, a friend of mine, uh, has invented this incredible water charger that um, is basically dug into the ground and then there are natural stones around it and you set your water in there and it's kind of vibrating to the Schumann resonance and um, staying structured in that way. So there are a lot of different ceremonial ways to treat your water. But what, what I think is really empowering about it is that, you know, we don't have to rely on a priest to make holy water for us. We can be drinking and bathing in and watering our plants with and cooking our food with holy water all the time. We can make the bio water that we're made of holy water all the time i had the the great privilege of studying um the religion of agamatirta which is the holy water religion in bali and and um studying under some water priests there and they have just dozens of different kinds of holy water and each one of them is made in a very very specific way and each one of them is used for a very specific purpose and and they have a lot of um Um, rituals and protocols around how to treat water to make sure that it stays holy and you know water is is the primordial mirror so it's always going to reflect our treatment of her back to us what we do to water we do to ourselves both personally and collectively and so if people treat water as a mundane object that's how it's going to show up for them right it's just going to be a thing a commodity a resource but if you treat her as the source then you start noticing incredible miraculous healing effects you start noticing your intuition open up in different ways you start noticing clarity and vision come into your life because water is is reflecting that level of consciousness back to you this podcast sponsor is eons 
Eons uses a blend of adaptogenic mushrooms, nootropics, and biotechnology to help solve the issues of sleep, anxiety, gut health, and productivity. Eons is nature's technology. These here are the sleep gummies. Anyone I give these sleep gummies to fall asleep immediately and all their insomnia and sleep issues go away. Check out eons.com to get their supplements. Mm -hmm. I had a spiritual teacher of mine, now it's making sense. She'd make me, when she was teaching manifestation tactics, she'd get me to to write on like a post-it all the things I want to bring into my life and like put it on a bottle of water mm -hmm. and like for a while feel into it, see it, visualize it, hold it in the water mm. and I drink the water. Yeah. So that's like a good practice. Absolutely, yeah. Hearing you talk, it's like, oh, I thought she was, I was like, what am I doing this shit? But <laughs> now I hear it's like, oh, that, that actually makes sense, right? Because you're charging your, it's like your body becomes that frequency that you charge up with the water. Yeah, Do you do absolutely. that? Do you do some kind of visualization with your water, like trying to bring in a new reality or? I often do, yeah. How so? I often do. Well, as I said, my, my practice with water varies from day to day. Um, but if I am doing, you know, some kind of creative visualization process, my preference is not to do it with the expectation that water is going to magnify that, although I know that it will. As we said before, each one of those, you know, molecular panels uh, on the clusters is um, the water clusters is actually amplifying the frequencies that it receives. Right? You can do an easy experiment with this at home. If you are you have a fob for your car and you go really far away from your car and it, and it no longer is close enough to connect, and then you hold up a jug of water and click the fob, that water is going to amplify the frequency and it'll be able to connect to your car even though before it was too far away. So water is always amplifying frequency. And so I know that it's going to amplify the prayers that I give it, but I notice it's a lot more effective if I give those vibrations or those visions to the water in a, in a more selfless way of like, this is water, this is what I want you to have. Like, I want you to be abundant. I want the water itself to flow freely and to flow abundantly. And so I'll pour that feeling of a of abundance and gratitude into it, not for my own benefit necessarily, although it does inevitably benefit me enormously to do that. Um, but I just notice, yeah, there's a difference when it's when it's more selfless rather than okay, I do this and then water is going to amplify and give me this. Mm -hmm. so, earlier, you talked about. I want to return back to the point of you made the point that. It's not so much the water you drink, but the lifestyle you live that makes you hydrated. How so? So what, what habits in our day-to-day -day lives dehydrate us and what actually creates hydration? Mm -hmm. Almost everything that we do in the Western world, strangely, is actually dehydrating us. Like um, what? Like sitting still um, is incredibly dehydrating. They've, they've said that sitting is the new smoking, right? And that it's actually more dangerous to sit still at an office job for, you know, eight to 10 hours a day, you know, and on, on your sofa watching TV than it is to smoke a pack of cigarettes a day. And that's because all of these watersheds within our body, they're actually hydraulic networks. The only watershed within your body that isn't is your circulatory system because it has your heart that vortexes the blood for you and gets it through all of your extremities. But when we're talking about these other uh, water systems in the body, like your lymphatic system, like your fascia, they only move when we move. And so if we're still all the time, then those waters get still and stagnant as well, which is enormously dehydrating. Another massive factor, which is one of the first things that um, we look at when I'm working with hydration clients, is having an EMF mitigation strategy. So your body literally cannot absorb hydration. Even if you're drinking the highest quality water in the world, your body cannot absorb hydration very well when you're in the presence of strong, man-made, non-native EMF fields because it can um, short out the um, the frequency at the cell membranes. What's the extent of that? So that to what I mean by that is like what, how sensitive is it? My phone's in the room, my phone yeah. connected to Wi-Fi, like how, how sensitive are we talking? Everyone's body is a little bit different. There's no standard of sensitivity, but some people are enormously sensitive and it does affect everyone on some level. So if you really cultivate the structure of your bio water fluids, then you have a lot more of a buffer to those EMF fields. Like if you do infrared sauna a lot, as I said before, that infrared radiation will actually structure your intracellular fluid. If you do a lot of uh, chanting and mantra, that will affect your intracellular fluid and keep it relatively structured. You know, a lot of the lifestyle 
lifestyle habits that we practice, like grounding or like, you know, getting out in the sunshine, things like that will will give you more of a buffer against the non-native EMFs. But if we don't do those things, you know, it is an electrical process that draws water across the cell membranes. That osmotic flow of water in and out of cells is entirely determined by the, the electrical charge at the cell membrane. And so if it starts to resonate at a non um, natural frequency, then you don't have the right frequency to conduct that water flow. And then our gap junctions can start to resonate out of phase. You know, we are bioelectrical being, beings more than anything else. And, and we will be tuned to whatever is the dominant frequency in our field. And for most people, unfortunately, that's Wi-Fi, that's 5G, that's EMFs of different forms, especially Bluetooth wearables and things like that. They're, they're just horrific for our, our, our hydration. And, and our wi- wired headphone gain. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, wired headphones. Absolutely. You know what's up. Um, so how do you manage that, right? You work on your, on social media. I'm assuming you use a computer. Mm-hmm. Your house has Wi-Fi, mm-hmm. <laughs> I assume. Um, what do you do? Yeah, I have different um, EMF tools that I use. So each one of my devices has some sort of multi-wave oscillator on it. And then also I have a Leela Quantum Infinity Block and a Quantum Block. Um, What's that? It's, um, it's by this incredible company called Leela Quantum. And they make these devices that create um, harmony in the field. So if you have an infinity block, it can harmonize an entire house and it actually creates a buffer against, um, for, for any water-based, you know, biological living being in the house, your plants, your animals, yourself against the harmful effects of EMFs. And I'm normally very skeptical of anything that uses the term quantum because it's so overused and just thrown around quite a lot. But um, these guys have been incredibly scientifically rigorous in the studies that they've been doing to prove the efficacy of their products, even double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trials. And, and if you go to my site um, and, and you search for the, the infinity block or the quantum block, you can see the different trials on there where they show you know, the effect on live blood cell analysis to someone who's exposed to a cell phone before Uh, being in the vicinity of one of these blocks and then afterwards and it's just night and day and then the other reason why I really love those is they're one of the best ways for structuring water as well so you can put your bottle of water inside of one of those blocks and it becomes immediately incredibly well structured it's as I said one of the best structuring tools all right I'm gonna tell you my water habit and roast me as hard as possible (laughs) all right I want just complete mercilessness from you all right I wake up Straight away, I get, I just aggressively pour a bottle of spring water into a glass. Aggressively. I throw, I throw in a molecular hydrogen tablet. Nice. Drink that. That's like my water for the next couple hours. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll do my little morning routine, ice bath, etc. Get back, I'll just have a bottle of water, spring water, glass mm-hmm. spring water. I'll just drink it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I fast all day. So I'll put, a, I'll put some salt and pink Himalayan salt in my water like the next round. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, before before I, I I I break my fast with like a coconut water, mm-hmm. um, and the rest of the day I'm just I'll put some more salt in my water and just drink the glass bottle. So what what am I doing wrong and what what needs to change? You know what? It's a pretty decent strategy. You're, Not bad. You're, I, I got like a D plus C minus. <laughs> I would I say you've got like a solid B B plus compared B? to most people. You've I'll got a it. solid I'll B B it. plus I'll for sure it. for sure. I would I would say the only things that I would add to that are you need to be restructuring that water because when it arises from a spring it's structured but as it sits stagnant for a long time on a shelf those molecular bonds are going to start to loosen so you want to bring some kind of structure to the water and and ideally um, through movement like vortexing or flow forms because that's also going to aerate the water as well so just like we need to breathe water needs to breathe it needs to exchange gases like oxygen and carbonic acid in fact dr tom cowan said that he believed one day it would be found that the dissolved gases within water are just as important as the water itself. And so you're bringing some of the dissolved gases by um, putting the hydrogen tablets in there. Although, unfortunately, with the tablets, you only absorb 40 to 60 percent of the hydrogen um, in those tablets and, and you have to drink it immediately afterwards. It's just not a full therapeutic dose of hydrogen. So I would say in addition to structuring, vortexing, aerating your water through some sort of flow form, I would also highly recommend um, getting a, a real hydrogen generator like the Lord's Hydrofix or um, 
or you could even get a spring aqua, which filters, structures, balances, and energizes and suffuses with molecular hydrogen. The only thing I would really caution against um, is there are so many swag, really crappy hydrogen generators on the market that do more harm than good. You don't want to directly electrolyze your drinking water. That's why I recommend the Lord's Hydrofix. So that could be um, a good option. And then the last thing I would add to your protocol is just some way of energizing the water, whether that is through direct personal communion with the water, you know, some kind of emotional connection, some kind of prayer that you speak over the water. Um, I have a, a water ritual protocol that it's, it's, it can be enormous. It can be incredibly short. It can be, you know, two to five minutes. Um, I have that, uh, PDF on my website. It's just like a simple, little ritualistic protocol, or it can be, you know, speaking a, a water prayer over the water or something like that, or just, just thanking it, just genuinely from your heart, you know, speaking gratitude over it for bringing you to life. Or it can be something more biohacky, like using an analemma wand or using an infopathy tool or putting it in the, the infinity block from Leela Quantum or something like that. What did you do this? What you gave me this? <laughs> When you walked yeah. into, the, into the studio, what, why is this hydrating me? What's in this? Okay, so that has a few different things going on very, with it. Very generous. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I hope it hydrates you. So that is um, actually a collaboration that I just did with Caden Rodhey of Blue Bottle Love. And we put my water is life symbol on there, which is hexagonal like water and has a spiral in it like water. And, um, you know, so that that geometry is actually, you know, going into the, the water. It's paying attention to, to all of this those shapes and affirmations on there. And then, um, so chromatography is um, one aspect of aquaphotomics, which is how water responds to various colors in different ways. In fact, there's a whole field of healing just based on exposing water to very specific bandwidths of color. And it's it's incredibly effective. In fact, so what, a lot this, of the books, the books on it were banned in the United States. That's how effective it was. Makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, there's that's a whole rabbit trail in and of itself. But cobalt blue in particular is one of water's favorite colors. And if water is already structured, that cobalt will help it to maintain its structure for an incredibly long time. So Veda Austin, one of the researchers um, and, and the friend that I was mentioning before, she did a study where she had fresh spring water that she put in a plastic bottle, one that she put in a, a clear glass bottle, and one that she put in a blue glass bottle overnight. The plastic bottle lost all of its structure. The clear glass bottle still had a little bit, but it was it was degraded. And then the blue glass kept its structure beautifully well. And then inside of that bottle is um, fresh spring water from Alive Waters. They are an incredible... Um, spring water delivery service. My friend Chris Sanborn runs the company and um, they're the only, I think one of only maybe two in the entire country that deliver raw, untreated, unprocessed, straight from a spring. So like when you drink Mountain Valley spring water, that water has still been through purification processes. It's either been through UV treatment Damn. or ozonation or something like that that actually um, kind of sterilizes the water so that it can be shelf stable for a long time and and there won't be any microorganisms that will bloom, you know, and, and create algae blooms. But those microorganisms are part of what make natural water such a beautiful probiotic. And so, you know, if you can get the the pure untreated uh, spring water. Actually, most spring waters that are on the shelf in the store, they're not even spring water. They're actually artesian well water because the industry lobbied to have the laws changed so they can dr drill a borehole and then pump water up and then label it spring water, even though it's not actually spring water. It's well water. So this is real spring so water. I'm, I'm going to drink this and start <laughs> levitating. So you're telling me. <laughs> you I'm, might. I'm you might. If you right do, now. I want right. to see. Oh my God, you've got a, you've got a solid <laughs> millimeter. I saw that. <laughs> it tastes different. <laughs> yeah, so there's also a little bit of crystal energy drops in there, which was developed by Dr. Henry Kawanda and Dr. Patrick Flanagan after they were studying Hunza water for 60 years. 60 years they studied this particular kind of water and then developed this um, mineral silica that structures water really beautifully. And then there's also a little bit of Ormus gold in there. So you, the bottle you have there, there's like crystals in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to tell me about that. Yeah, so... Crystals are, there's a, a property when it comes to water called epitaxy or transference. And that's basically where anything that has 
coherence will bring more coherence to anything that is disordered or disorganized in its field. And so what makes crystals crystals and not just rocks is the fact that their molecular structure is in an organized repeating pattern. It's in a matrix. It's in a formation. And so it can store information, right? And it's the exact same with water. So we want that organized matrix that turns it from a bulk fluid into a liquid crystal. And um, if water is already structured, then having crystals near it can help it to keep its structure. But um, according to the work of Dr. Flanagan, crystals don't give the water a lot of initial structure. So I do think that that's one area in the whole hydro hippie world that's given a lot of um, probably a lot more credit than is due to just put crystals in your water and then suddenly it's it's living water. It, it does some good, um, but I think it's it's part of an overall strategy. But this is aquamarine and um, yeah, you can get them with all kinds of different, whatever different crystals you want and charge it with different frequencies with cool. the different crystals. It's kind of fresh. It's aesthetic. I like it. <laughs> um, it's an out there question, but I'm saying it for myself. Um, I'm one of those annoying people who always pees. Like, you can't take me on a road trip. I hate going to the movies. I have to pee all the time. What I'm asking that is, is there a way to, to not have that happen? Because I'm assuming if I just pee everything out all the time, I'm, de I'm like dehydrating myself. So is that, am I, is that bullshit? Like, it's, is it healthy to pee a lot? Is it not healthy to pee a lot? I would say it is healthy to pee a lot. When you look at monkeys, they pee way more often than we do, actually. When you look at primates in general, you know, they, and not, I'm not saying that I necessarily agree with the, you know, the theory that we come from primates, but, you know, in the sense that we're all part of a, a collective family. Um, I think that the more you get up and pee, you're moving your body water, you're getting up and moving, like it's a good thing. But you will definitely notice a difference when you start drinking water that is highly structured and especially that is highly mineral rich and has a great electrolyte profile, that your body is going to absorb a lot more of that and less of it will just be so flowing through water, you like just, irrigation. Just, just pee through me immediately. Yeah, so that's irrigation. That's one thing that tells you that you're not getting well hydrated from the water, that it's just irrigating you. So yeah, improve the quality of water. Also, um, if you improve the receptivity of your cells, you're going to absorb a lot more. Um, so for most people, this involves, again, EMF mitigation strategies. A lot of different dietary factors um, can play a role in that as well. If people are eating really low quality fats, I'm sure this doesn't apply to you, but for most people eating seed, seed oil, oils. I chug seed oils. <laughs> every day. To help, help, help right there. <laughs> okay, we got to get you some ghee stat. Right, <laughs> but yeah, because the, the cell membranes are just basically lipid layers. And so if, you have, if they're made of poor quality fats, they're not going to be able to draw the water across as well. So um yeah i would say those are the main things and then the last thing about that is just to sip water gradually through the day rather than just chugging it all at once because if you chug it all at once of course you're going to pee most of it out how what does that cost you just like taking like a gulp every couple 10 minutes like what, what does it look like it's up to you and whatever feels good to you whatever works with your lifestyle dr batman gallage um the the doctor i was mentioning before who developed the water cure protocol he had a very specific recommendation for when to drink, but he was also working with people who were incredibly sick and they were taking this water medicinally. Um, and it's one of many different kinds of medicinal waters out there. But um, yeah, it, I don't, personally, I, I don't like to get very structured about it. Mm. So you, you stay strapped with your water wherever you go. Oh yeah, you it's can't, my little friend. It'd be, it'd be a, <laughs> a blasphemy if you drank water from the, from the restaurant. I wouldn't say it would be a blasphemy, but it just wouldn't do me a lot of good. Like I yeah. know it's not going to hydrate me and it's going to taste gross. So why would I? But I, I'll sometimes bring, you know, some some portable tools with me if I don't have access to my own water to be able to Do you know a whole water hydration station at the restaurant? I got a few things that fit in my purse. Dedication. I like <laughs> yeah. it. I like it. Another question Plus I had is that starter. I've seen some studies and again, I don't know what to believe nowadays, but I felt in my body maybe that like uh, to some level of glucose in the water hydrate you. Like, for example, like uh, coconut water or I saw something that showed that, that like orange juice and coconut water are more hydrating than water itself. Is there any truth to that? Like, do you in, in terms of putting glucose in the water like a little bit? I don't think it's news? I don't think it's necessarily the glucose that's making it more hydrating, although it may because metabolically you're going to absorb glucose and it may bring some of the molecules with it. But it's mostly the fact that anything that comes from a plant is bio water bio water is inherently structured that's how 
water in living beings is able to conduct life force because it's structured. So, you know, if you eat a, a cucumber or an apple or an orange or something like that, your body is actually going to receive more hydration from it than if you drink a bottle of Dasani, which is unstructured, has no minerals in it, et cetera. It's just going to go straight through you because there's kind of this slower release over time. And also because those have electrolytes in them, coconut water and, and orange juice have electrolytes in them. However, they're not as hydrating, not even close it was hydrating is really high quality mineral spring water that is structured and that is hydrogen rich and and that you've taken through this process of making it spring water um because you know your body has to go through a metabolic process to absorb it whereas when you drink regular water it becomes your bloodstream within five minutes within five minutes of drinking your water it is your blood it's literally you know that's one reason why i carry my water with me everywhere because it's like i know that it's my external bloodstream and in a minute it'll be my internal bloodstream so i'm going to make sure that it's well taken care of and like well loved so you're telling me well gatorade isn't hydrating no way <laughs> how, how could that be a bottle of gatorade is hydrating oh wow gatorade <laughs> I've got such a love-hate relationship with Gatorade. But you know, what is when, the love? What do you used to like it when you were younger or something? Yeah, when I was a kid, course, you know, because yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's so palatable. We've got yeah. I think one of the reasons people don't like to drink water is because they're so accustomed to such intense flavors all the time that, you know, the simplicity and the refreshment of water is is not that appealing to them, but also because most of the water that people drink tastes gross. I went to a bar class the other day and um, I hadn't brought water with me because I had just had some at the house, and so I didn't think I would need any. And the, the um, teacher of the class was like, oh, this is going to be a hard class. You're going to need some. And so she got me a, a cup of water from the, the fountain or whatever they had there. And, and I took a sip of it. I was like, this is so gross tasting. No wonder most people don't like to drink water. It just tastes nasty comparatively. And I was I was kind of surprised. But I, you know, just coming back to the the coconut water idea... Although it is hydrating because of the high level of electrolytes that it has, I do tend to caution people against drinking a lot of coconut water, especially this time of year, and especially if you live far from the tropics. So if it is macrobiotic to your region, it can be okay. And if it's, you know, in in the summer, it can be okay. But like this time of year, it can actually throw our circadians off a little bit. And also it is the highest in deuterium of just about anything like it. coconut I'm water is incredibly high. Right yeah, I swear by coconut that. water. <laughs> Shoot. Well, start drinking this kind of stuff. You might like it even oh, better. Oh, need it. There's something about it. It works for me, but fuck, I'll try this out. You know, so if you were to design your own hydration drink to sell, mass sell in the mar- in the markets, what would you put in it? I I don't think that I would. You wouldn't. <laughs> no. No way you could do it. I mean, I could absolutely, but but it has so much more to do with how you treat the water when you get it than just what you put in it. Like okay. if it's stagnant, it's just not going to have the aeration and the structure that it's going to need to really hydrate you. So I would maybe design instead of a instead of a something to put in the water, I would maybe design a bottle that actually keeps the water flowing. Which actually, I have some of those bottles on my site. They're like portable vortexing bottles, so you can What's just do, do that went, on the go. I went to Air One in California. I was there a month ago, and just just to like. Just to be a, a douchebag, I bought the like thirty dollar bottle of water. Have you seen those before? It was probably Ofora water. I yeah. think so. Yeah. Is that a scam? No, Ofora is great. It's um highly oxygen saturated. It's worth the price. Thirty dollar bottle of water. It's worth it. It's a good one. It's a good one. There's also some thirty dollar bottles that are deuterium depleted, like light water. They have like five parts per million deuterium. That's the kind of water that, as I mentioned before, is approved as a cancer medication over in Eastern Europe, and mm. I think it's in Hungary. So I want to close with a rabbit hole. You ready? Let's go. Kind of get out there. Why do you think? Why do you think that none of this is talked about ever in med- medicine? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, it's pretty simple that hyd- factor hydration is is behind almost all illness. Right? That should be that, that seems to make sense to me in my experience. Right? Whenever I'm dehydrated, I get more sick. I feel like shit. Right? Why is this? Why is this such a niche thing to talk about? Even for me, right? Like I, I'm someone who is well educated when it comes to psychological work and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know shit about this. And that more so, yes, is my ignorance. But it's more so reveals like that no one talks about this shit, right? Mm-hmm. Like in all, in the sixty episodes, episodes I've done, water was mentioned once. I've talked to all the you know experts, not once. Yeah. So why do you think that is? Why are we brainwashed to like just forget about water? And do you have any idea of what caused that, um, and why that is? Absolutely. Yeah. It's so 
ironic and counterintuitive that the substance that is the most common on Earth, that is the most powerful on Earth, that rules over all of the weather patterns, all of the climate, that the very substance that we're made of, the substance that keeps us alive, the substance that is necessary to mine and to create and to, you know, fabricate, and that substance that is behind every dollar that is spent, that the substance that is, you know, so central to everything, to agriculture, to medicine, to ecology to politics, to agriculture, to even peace on earth. There's, you know, studies showing that the more drought stricken, the more war torn and that the more hydrated a landscape is, the more peace there is. Like it's so integral to everything. Why is it the most overlooked thing? And actually Victor Schauberger, who's my number one favorite water wisdom keeper in history, he was around in the late 1800s. And, and he said that, you know, basically, Water wisdom keepers have been censored over the centuries, and he was a century ago. So even in his time, water wisdom keepers had been continuously censored. He would, you know, get books where the authors had spoken about um, their findings around water, and then later editions of those books, that information was completely taken out and omitted. Why, and why said, back then? I, I mm -hmm. understand now because of the pharmaceutical profit, but why back then was it censored? Mm -hmm. The demonic forces. What do you think it was censored for? Well, inherent within water is the key to free energy generation. In fact, Victor Schauberger actually unlocked that and created free energy devices based on water. And even since then, there have been nearly free energy devices created based mm. on water, like Stan Meyer de developed a, um, a an engine that would run on water. One gallon of water it would run for 100 miles. It could be rainwater, swamp water, lake water, doesn't matter, any kind of water. It would run for 100 miles with zero emissions. The only emissions that it put out was water. And so, you know, the amount of power that is inherent in human beings recognizing that there is a decentralized source of not only infinite energy, but also infinite um, abundance where you can, if you understand the water cycle and you understand water's needs and you look out for those, you can turn even the most dry, desert, arid landscapes into lush, abundant food forests. There's a lot of vested interest in humanity not having the level of access to food and resources that we have to water. So if people learned about water, they would automatically know how to generate everything they need without being dependent on the system. Schauberger said that water is the capital of capital, meaning that there is no dollar that is circulated in the economy that doesn't have water backing it in some way because water is needed to grow everything, it's needed to produce everything, and that it is in fact more valuable than gold. Life itself can't be controlled, but if you can control the substance that gives life, then you control the lives of all of those who need it. In fact, in Chinese, the symbol for water is the same as the symbol for control. So the most powerful cartels in the entire world right now, they're not the drug cartels, they're not even the pharmaceutical industry or the um, military industrial complex. They're the cartels that we never hear about. It's the water privatization complex, which especially since the 1980s, has been blackmailing the entire global south to privatize all of their clean water assets and clean water resources and has been doing so increasingly in the, the global north as well. And that privatization is the direct cause of the drought and desertification and the water crisis and the water shortage that we're seeing in the world because, you know, these interests don't want to see a world of freshwater abundance because the scarcer water is, the more their private clean water assets are. And so there's there's more money being poured into water right now by the you know top one percent of wealth in the world just snapping up water rights all over the world, buying up entire aquifers than there is being poured into anything else. And it's and it's just not talked about. You about to get you about to get us killed right now. <laughs> I never heard about this. So you know, it would be a good it would be a good cause to die on I, I hear for you. life itself. So it's why why do you think that is? Just to control control our health or control our what do you think about it? Why why the control on water? What because I I think intuitively automatically understands I understand the other ones right like farmland etc. But what, why the water specifically? Yeah, it's partially for control. It's partially for profit. But then I think the deeper reason is because. 
as we were saying before, water is the glove on the hand of consciousness. If you look at all of these ancient religious teachings, the mystery school teachings, ancient indigenous water wisdom teachings, the, the most common thread between all of them is recognizing that water is the medium between the human and the heavenly. It is the mediator between the manifest and the non-manifest. It hmm. is direct access to creator, direct access to spirit. The higher the quality your bio blocking, water is, blocking, connection blocking divinity. consciousness. Same with tap exactly. water, right? Put fluoride in tap water. That, that's the reason. Yeah. Damn. Silent weapons for quiet wars. We're drinking them all the time. Yeah, no one, I never thought about that. I don't think, cause I do a lot of, one of those conspiracy beat dudes that I've gone in every rabbit hole. Haven't heard about this one, so they've done a good job hiding it. Yeah. And it's it's severe. So that makes that makes perfect sense. It's a deep one. It's, yeah. a fun, it's a fun one to go down for sure. I've been studying it for 14 years now. I started in 2009 and still learn something new about water all the time. And I know I will continue studying it till the day I die. And till the day I die, I still will have only barely scratched what, what, the surface of water. Why water? Because, you know, again, I've interviewed many people now. Everyone has usually the kind of same interest, right? Like, channeling wisdom or Christianity or um, health, fitness, dating, mm -hmm. why water? Like what, what about you and your awakening drew you to water? Mm. Well, there's nothing that you mentioned just there in that list that water doesn't affect. Yeah. And when I started to study water, I started to realize that because it is the source of everything, it also holds the solutions to everything. So it holds the solutions to our medical crisis. It holds the solutions to the quote unquote climate crisis. It holds the solutions to our agricultural problems, even political and socioeconomic questions, economic questions. Water contains the 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 blueprints for how to ethically deal with all of these things. Um, and then you know, when I started, especially when I started looking into the Kogi wisdom, the Kogi are a, a tribe in Colombia who, you know, they're, they have probably the most intact water cosmology of any um, indigenous tribe today. And they're they are desperately trying to share it with the rest of the world, whom they call their little brothers. They call their, us, you know, the Western world, their little brothers. And they say that water contains the holographic map of reality. It contains all worlds of reality from our waking life to dreams to the visions that we receive in medicine journeys. And so when you recognize how to tap into water, you gain access to this infinite field of consciousness and awareness that is integral to everything else. And because water is at the center of everything, the only thing that made sense to me was to make it the center of my life and my studies. Well, makes sense. Well, thank you for, for doing that, educating all of us. I didn't know anything about it. I think it's something that is probably the most important thing for all of us to know. So thank you very much for educating me and, and everyone else. Thanks for um, having me on. And where where can people find you and, and get get your protocols for how to hydrate themselves? Yeah, so I have um, all of my courses and my webinars and one-on-one -on -one, um, hydration client things and workbooks and all kinds of uh, stuff over at waterslife.academy. And then the shop where you can buy all the tools that we talked about, everything to filter, structure, balance, energize your water, even tools for going out and foraging your water, tools for your water altar, you name it, everything is at waterislife.shop. So the academy is waterislife.academy, the shop is waterislife.shop, and then I'm on Instagram more often than I should be, and that's just my name, at Jen Isabel Friend. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on, Lucas. Of course, really of course. Fun. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to watch more content, please click this video right here and don't forget to subscribe right here. Thank you.